Amen? Amen. Amen. You ready to get in the Word? Why don't you stand with me? Open your Bibles to the book of Acts chapter 1. The book of Acts chapter 1. And we're in this series called Closer. And I really believe God has something for all of our lives tonight. Because he wants to do something so real in you that he'll touch your life. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. And it says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And so, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem. So the power of the Lord comes on you so that you could be his witness. The Holy Spirit comes on you so you could be his witnesses in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the spirit of revelation. Give our minds illumination that we would experience transformation. God, I pray you give us a mind to perceive and a heart to receive all that you have. And I ask that after this message, we will never, never, never be the same. In Jesus' name. And all the people that slept in and had a great day say amen. Amen. You may be seated. If you don't have a message outline, our ushers will be more than happy to get you one. We're in this series called Closer. And we have been talking about the fact that It's our desire, it's been all of our desire, that we would draw closer to God. Growing up, I always had this passion inside of me. I always had this desire inside of me that really wanted to draw closer to God. I was like, God, I want to be closer to you. But here was my problem. I never knew how. It wasn't until I was introduced to the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit began to draw me closer to the God in which I serve today. We've been talking about the Holy Spirit in this series, and we've been talking about the fact that he's a person. He's more than it. He's more than a goose bump. He's more than just your hair standing up, depending where your hair is. You know, he's more than your hair standing up. He really is a person. And we learned that he has a mind. He has the will. He has the emotions. He is the Holy Spirit of God. He's God's spirit living inside of us. As I read Acts 1-8, you would realize and you would see that it was Jesus telling the disciples to go to Jerusalem. And this is what he said. He said, go to Jerusalem for you're going to receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. It's interesting because in John chapter 20, just a, a few weeks before that, Jesus had resurrected, reappears back to the disciples... And here's what happens in John chapter 20, verse 22, and it says, Then he breathed on them, and he said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Most scholars believe that this was the actual moment in which the disciples actually received salvation. Up until that time, the three and a half years that they were with Jesus, Jesus really never did a sacrifice of sins with his disciples. You see, none of his disciples making sacrifices for their sins, Because the ultimate sacrifice, the Lamb of God, was walking with them. By this time, Jesus had died. He resurrected. He became the sacrificial Lamb of God. And God and Jesus breathed on them. And the Holy Spirit came inside of them. And listen to me, their sins were washed away. You see, I struggled for many years until I went to college and I realized a revelation of a struggle that I had. And that struggle was very clear. How can the Holy Spirit be in you and then come on you? How could something actually be in you and then come on you? Well, I would say it like this in a sentence to sum it all up. He comes in you to save you, but on you to use you. He comes in you to save you. That literally the seal of the Holy Spirit seals your heart up that you're saved but he comes on you so that the god of the universe can use your life jesus one day said the spirit of the lord god is upon me when the spirit of the lord came upon me god began to use him in a remarkable way you see every one of us will go through what i call the three stages of baptism Unlike, uh, for most people, they've only experienced two. See, Paul talks about it in Hebrews. Look what he says in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 6. He says, therefore, leaving the discussion of elementary principles of Christ, let us go on 
to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. But look what it says. Of the doctrine of baptisms. Notice it is, it is plural. It's not singular. So there's more than just one baptism that God wants you to experience. And he says, of laying on of hands, of resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permits. I want to show you, as I showed you last week, that Pentecost didn't happen in Acts chapter 2. It first happened on the top of the mountain when Moses was given the Ten Commandments. Because we learned last week that the Old, Ta Old Testament is the establishment, while the New Testament is the fulfillment. And I'm going to show you that even in the New Testament, the way God had Moses construct his temple, that God was showing you the three different types of baptisms he wants everyone to experience. The first baptism you and I will experience is the baptism of salvation. That means the Holy Spirit baptizes you into the body of Christ. When you lifted up your hands and you said, Lord, I want, I want you to come into my life. I want you to be the Savior of my life. Here's what happened. How you got to Jesus was by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one that brings people to Jesus. If we want to see our family saved, we got to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit and ask God through his Holy Spirit to go and touch our family that are far from you and bring them to Jesus. Because no man can get to Jesus unless they are, they come, or they are led by the Holy Spirit to Jesus because the first thing that happens is that the Holy Spirit baptizes you in Jesus, and that's when you receive salvation. The Bible talks about it in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Here's what it says. For by one spirit we are all baptized into one body. Whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. So you and I were led by the Holy Spirit to Jesus because we learned that in John chapter 17, it is the spirit that leads man into truth. Who is truth? Truth is not an it. Truth is not a fact. Truth is a person. Jesus one day stood up and says, I'm the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. How do you get to truth? By the Holy Spirit. How do you get to Jesus? By the Holy Spirit. When your life was, was living in sin, the Holy Spirit was the one convicting your heart, saying there's something better for your life than what you're living now. And that same Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit that's driving you to Jesus. Are you hearing me today? And so you and I got to understand that the first baptism you receive is the baptism of salvation driven by the Holy Spirit. The second baptism is what we're all familiar with, and that's water baptism. See, the disciples baptize you in water. Notice salvation is that the Holy Spirit baptizes you into the body of Christ. But the second baptism, it's the disciples that baptize you in water. I'm going to give you a startling revelation on this, okay? Bible says in Matthew chapter 28, here's what it says, go there, go therefore and make what? Come on, go therefore and make what? Of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Can I tell you that biblically, disciples are the ones who baptize. You don't have to be baptized by a pastor or a priest to be baptized. I knew that messed you up. Because if we're going to live according to the Bible, we're going to live according to the fact that it is God's disciples, that could be a pastor, that could be a priest, but that also could be a leader in the church that can baptize you in water. See, for so long, the priests and the pastors, in some sense, because out of their own insecurities, have held the church in hostage to just sit there and say, you know what, we're the only ones that can baptize. But biblically, the Bible says it was the disciples who baptized you in water. So you don't have to wait. If someone gets saved in your small group, wants to get baptized, put them in your pool. Dunk them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and they're baptized in water. Come on, you ought to say amen to that. And then when they come to church, ask them to get a t-shirt, take a picture. Okay? So notice, watch this, notice, the Holy Spirit baptizes you into the body of Christ, salvation. The, the disciples baptize you in water, that's immersion, and then the third baptism is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's Jesus who baptizes you into the Holy Spirit. Look what the Bible says. The Bible says it like this. Here's what the Bible says in Matthew 3. I indeed baptize you with water under repentance. This is John speaking. But 
He who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. Listen, speaking of Jesus, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Come on, and with what? Fire. No, you got to say it like you're ghetto. Fire. fire. Come on, don't act like you're all prissy right now. There's still a ghetto-ness inside of you, okay? Come on, we got to practice it. Fire. Not fire. <laughs> fire, okay? One, two, three. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Now I'm preaching to my peeps right now. So watch this. The first baptism, Jesus baptizes you. And the Holy Spirit baptizes you in the body of Christ. The second baptism, the disciples baptize you in water. And the third baptism, the Holy Spirit baptizes you in fire. I mean, Jesus baptizes you in the fire and the Holy Ghost. I want you to see the tabernacle. The first door they walked in. They had to sacrifice an animal, get the blood and sprinkle it to cover their sins. That was salvation. Then they walked into the next room, and they had to get the lay bar of water, and they had to pour it over their body. That's called water baptism. And then they let the next room they had to go into, they had to get the ram's horn, and they had to pour it over their head because they were being anointed by the Holy Spirit. Can I tell you something? Can I tell you why? Put that thing up there. Can I tell you why? We've been preaching on the Holy Spirit because it's very simple. That devil doesn't mind you getting saved. He doesn't even mind when you get all excited and you pose that I've been raised to life and you get baptized. Can I tell you what he's absolutely terrified of? Is when you step into the third dimension and you get anointed by God. Why? Because can I tell you the Holy Spirit comes in you. I mean, the, the, the Holy Spirit's in you to save you, but he's on you to use you. Can I tell you, the Holy Spirit's not afraid. I mean, the devil's not afraid of Christians that have the Holy Spirit in them. He is terrified of the Christians that have the Holy Spirit on them. And so, and so what you got to realize, what you got to realize is that the reason why the devil has made a controversy of the Holy Spirit to even to the point that it's not God that divides churches and turns them into denominations. It's not Jesus that divides churches and, 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 and theology that turns into denominations. It is the function of the Holy Spirit that separates the church and creates all these camps and all these denominations, not on our belief of Jesus, not on our belief of God, but by the Holy Spirit. Can I tell you why? Because when the Holy Spirit baptizes you, when the anointing comes upon upon you when the spirit of the lord comes upon your life it's when the devil gets terrified because he uses you in a mighty way acts chapter 2 listen acts chapter 2 says it all it says then peter said to them repent speaking of salvation and let every one of you be baptized speaking of water in the name of jesus christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the holy spirit talking about the oil to be in Powered with the Spirit. Here it is for the promise. Everyone say promise. promise. So notice that it's not just a promise for the pastor. Not just a promise for the leaders. Look what it says. This promise of all three baptism is to you and to who else? Come on. It's not just to you, but it's the next generation as well. And to all who are afar off, as many as of the Lord our God will call. Can I tell you that you got to stop thinking the only person that's anointed is Pastor Obed, Pastor Andrew, Pastor Sergio, pa no, Gio. Listen, you got to realize you are just as anointed to do what God has called you to do as we are anointed to do what God called us to do. It's the anointing on our lives when we allow the Holy Spirit to come upon us. The Holy Spirit, when he came into your life, listen, the Holy Spirit came, and he came into your life as a gift. The Bible says that Jesus told his disciples, he says, my father is going to give you a gift. It's the Holy Spirit. He's going to come into your life. But see, here's what you fail to recognize. It's what you fail to recognize is that what's in the package of the Holy Spirit. What you don't realize that's living in your life right now is every one of these nine gifts that at any moment the Holy Spirit can activate in your life and instantaneously God can do something super in your natural. He can turn the whole situation around and here you are, you are packed. 
You are loaded with faith. You are loaded with prophecy. You are loaded with knowledge. You are loaded with wisdom. And you're waking up every day timid, intimidated, full of fear, insecure. And you're sitting there and you're going, I just don't know what to do. What do you mean you don't know what to do? You got the Holy Spirit inside of you that has all these gifts living inside your life. So what does he do with these gifts? What does the Holy Spirit actually do with these gifts? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, look what he says. He says, now about the gifts of the Spirit, not gift, gifts. Brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. In other words, here's what he's saying. I don't want you to be ignorant of these gifts. This is why you're going to want to be here on Wednesday night, because Pastor Brian's going to break every one of those down. You're not going to want to miss it. I promise you it will be a theology lesson. And you're going to love it. Look what it says. There are different kind of gifts, but it is the same what? There's, who distributes them? There are different kinds of service, but it is the same Lord. It goes on to say there are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one is given through a spirit of the message of wisdom. To another, it's knowledge. To, the, to another, it's faith. To another, it's healing. To another, it's miraculous powers. To another, it's prophecy. To another, it's the distinguishing of spirits. And it goes on, and it says, and to another, it's, in diff it's different kinds of tongues. And still another, interpretation of tongues. Here it is. All of these are the work of the one same spirit. So every one of these is in the Holy Spirit. Now watch. And he, speaking of the Spirit of God, distributes these and them to each one just as he determines. Oh, I'm going to mess you up right now. John chapter 17, it's on your outline. It says, it is the Holy Spirit that leadeth you into all truth. And here's what it says. And he will show you the things to come. He will show you the things to come. He will show you the things to come. Here's what you got to realize. If the Holy Spirit is going to show you the things to come, it means that whatever is in your future is already established. I'm going to say that one more time. If the Holy Spirit is going to show you the things to come, which is your future, it is the Holy Spirit that already knows your future is established. Now, what gets me to my future? It's simple. A desire. Anything that has to do with where you're going first is initiated by a desire. God puts a desire in your heart. The desire didn't come because you were that good or you were that smart. That desire that comes into your heart, that seed of a dream that comes into your heart is an indication that there is a future that's waiting for it. And so it's the Holy Spirit that's telling you there is something that's about to happen that's in your future and it's already established. You got to trust me in your reality so I can get you to your destiny. Come on, do you hear me? Now, I want to show you something that's going to help you. Oh, it's going to help you. It's going to help you, okay? These nine gifts can be broken down into three. The first, this is why I painted them different colors, okay? The first one is the revelation gifts. These are all revelation gifts. These come by hearing, okay? Word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discerning of spirits. All of those come by what you hear. Next group are what you call power gifts, all with the hands. Gift of faith, impart it on people's lives. Gift of healing, lay hands on the sick, sick shall recover. Gift of miracles, lay hands on them, and they shall receive a miracle. That's all power gifts. And then the third, listen, are spoken gifts. Everything has to come out of, out of your mouth. Prophecy has to come out of your mouth. Tongues has to come out of your mouth. Interpretation of tongues has to come out of your mouth. These are all spoken gifts. Revelation gifts, power gifts, spoken gifts. This is what you're going to get taught on on Wednesday. That's why you're not going to want to miss it. But let me show you what happens. All of these gifts are in the Holy Spirit. 
And he determines at what time you need what gift. We limit ourselves sometimes. Because here's what happened to me growing up. The only gifts that I knew were spoken gifts. You got to know how to speak in tongues. If you don't speak in tongues, you're not saved. So every day I'd be like, Honda, Suzuki, Kawasaki, <laughs> E-D-D-I-E, my name is it. I try to do everything I can. Believe me. Listen, if you didn't have a prophetic word for somebody, you weren't spiritual. So I grew up and started exploring, going out, seeing other churches, began to realize there's more gifts. And it wasn't in one day until I was in college, my first day of college, I'll never forget this. I'm in college. I get to college. I'm all excited. Bible college, seminary, cemetery, whatever you want to call it, right? And I'm like, yes, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be great. And, and, and so I get there, and, and, and it, I, I met my roommate. He was already all packed in. We had bunk beds. I started bringing out all my books, and I brought out a book on the Holy Spirit, and he goes, oh, you're one of them. I'm like, oh, Lord, <laughs> it's going to be battles every night. So every single night we argued. We argued about the Holy Spirit. And he would tell me, oh, man, that stuff is fake. That's not real, man. You know, you guys, you guys, you know, you guys, you guys over there, over here, you guys, you do all. I mean, and, I, and, and, and finally after a few weeks, every night arguing on the bunk beds. How many know that's just arguing every night, right? I was like, hey, bro, I, I got an idea. I'm not an arguer. I'm a lover, okay? You can only be two. I'd rather be a lover than an arguer. Come on, all you men, you missed it. You should have said amen to that, right? <laughs> and so I just said, I said, um, I got an idea. Why don't I go to your church one week, and then the following week, you come to my church? He was like, perfect. Let's do that. So, man, the next week I went to his church, Baptist church, man, 200-member choir. They were all in robes. They were singing, you know, how great thou art. I mean, it was just phenomenal. I was like, wow, this was amazing. And then you did worship. They opened up these books, and they were like, turn to 353. And I'm like, whoa, this is awesome, man. I love that they had trombones, trumpets, all this kind of, I'm like, man. This is awesome. I was like, I love this. Pastor went up there, had a robe on, you know, preached from a pulpit, never went away from it, had a long microphone. That thing was long, right? And, you know, he would preach. It was awesome. After service, I was like, bro, I love your church, man. This was incredible. Man, I love this place, man. He's like, well, Pastor Obed, I mean, Obed, I can't wait till next week. Next week's going to be great. I go, oh, yeah, dude, you're going to love my church. Boy, you're going to love my church. I'm telling you. So, you know, the week went by. And then that Sunday, I woke up, I called my mom, you know, in those days, your Bible calls, you know, we didn't have no cell phones, you had to actually use a pay phone, you know. And so I go and I call my mom and said, hey, mom, we're going to be coming to church today, and we're going to come to the to 1030 service, and because uh, it's the full one, I want my, my roommates coming, it's going to be great. So is Pastor Don preaching? And she's like, oh, no, he's not preaching today. I'm like, well, what, do, what do you mean he's not preaching today? Oh, no, oh, man, we got a guest speaker. I'm like, Really? She goes, oh, you remember the guy that, like, comes and he prophesies over people? I'm like, Mom, you are kidding me. <laughs> no, 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 Mom, no. Tell me, you're, tell me, tell me he's not coming. No, he, he's coming. So I go back to my room. I'm saying, hey, bro, man, dude, thank God I, we didn't get all dressed to go to church today, man, because I went, tried to start my car, my car ain't working. So we can't go to church. He's like, oh, no, 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 don't worry about it, dude. We'll take my car. I'm like, nah, bro, you know. I'm, I go, man, I, honestly, man, you know, just be real, man. I'm, I'm not feeling good. And he's like, bro, come on, man. I've been looking forward all week to go to your church. I want to go to your church. I'm like, I don't know if you want to come this week to my church. So you know that whole drive? 45 minutes and you're just like, bro, are you sure? Do you want to kind of like maybe go to lunch, you know? Maybe this is not the right week to go. And he's like, oh, bet I'm fired up, dude. I can't wait. And I'm like, okay. So, you know, we're in service and, you know, he preaches and everything. And he starts moving in the gifts. And you know when that, that feeling comes on you and you're like, dang, he's going to call one of us out. <laughs> I know he is. And it's like, it's like, it's bubbling in me. And I'm like, 
Next thing you know, he goes, young man in the blue, the blue jacket. I look, my jacket ain't blue. I'm like, oh, thank you, God. But when I look over, my roommate's <laughs> jacket is blue. And he looked at the guy and he's like, and the guy's like, yes, you young man. I'm like, oh, God, help me, Lord. <laughs> In Jesus' name. I don't even know. I started speaking in tongues. I was like, oh, God, you need to help me right now. My friend walks up. I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to hear it the whole semester. And he walks up, and the guy's like, and my friend's just staring at him, dude. And the guy's like, God starts using him in the gift of prophecy and starts speaking in his life. And all of a sudden, I could see my, my roommate, his shoulders kind of. Then tears start coming down his eyes. Then his knees kind of buckle, and he, he just drops to his knees, and he just starts weeping before God. And so I immediately run over there, and I put my arms around him. He's hugging me. He's like, thank you. Thank you so much for bringing me to your church. And I'm thinking, yeah, it's my church, bro, <laughs> you know? And he's like, thank you so much, right? And, 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 and I'm like, bro. He goes, that, that man doesn't know me. I don't, even, I don't even know him. That man doesn't know me. And it was word for word of a prophecy that was given to me when I was in kids camp as a kid. God reminded me that it still can happen. See, I've learned to find out what's more in this box. Because it's like Christmas. You know, if you see a gift that's wrapped, you just keep on walking by it every day until it's Christmas. It sits under your tree, but it's just a gift. It means nothing to you, even though that what's inside of it is what you've been asking for Christmas. But you don't know it. And therefore, you still are even doubting, are you going to get it? But you don't even realize it's under your tree. And the reason why you don't know it is because you haven't opened it up and realized there was something great inside of it. See, friends, listen, you're never going to know the power of the Holy Spirit on your life until you begin to open up your heart to see what the Holy Spirit has placed inside your heart. See, I, I'm going through something right now to the point that I, I got to make decisions, big decisions. I don't need the gift of prophecy right now. Matter of fact, I don't need a, to speak in any tongue or have an interpretation of it. You know what I need from the Holy Spirit? Is I need knowledge. Lord, I need wisdom right now. You know, as I'm having to make big decisions, so is our board. Our board of trustees right now and our board of, our, 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 our advisory board, they've been working hard looking for land, looking for buildings. I mean, they, they, are, they have been doing their due diligence. And the day is going to come where they're going to come to me and say, Pastor Obed, we located it. We got it. We've got the permits. We got the permission from the city. This is what we got. You know, at that time, I'm not going to need the word of knowledge. I'm not going to need the word of wisdom. You know what I'm going to need? I'm going to need the gift of faith. I'm going to have to have the gift of faith to believe for something more than what my faith can believe for at that time. See, but if I was only open to the fact that, oh, the only gift I want is knowledge, the only gift I want is wisdom, then I'd be closed to all the other gifts that God would need in my life for the season in my life to get me to the destiny that he has for my life. I've learned, I've learned to desire the gifts, but love the Holy Spirit. I've learned that the gifts don't define my life. The Holy Spirit refines my life. It's what I need in my life. And when you learn these things in your life, that I value the Holy Spirit. And by me valuing the Holy Spirit, I embrace the gifts that come along. That he has for my life in Jesus name. You see. I like to say it like this. Spiritual gifts. Are a special, a special supernatural ability. 
that God gives to each one of his children so that together they can advance his purposes to the world. See, I believe that in your life, there's a dream inside of you. I believe there's seeds of dreams inside your life. I believe within every one of you today is a desire. Can I ask you a question? Who placed that desire in your life? Who was the one that placed a seed of a dream in your life? People often tell me, man, Obed, you, you built a great church. I said, man, I have no idea what you're talking about. I had a dream. There was a seed. But the only way I knew how to do it was when I would lean on the knowledge and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. A year ago, we got a phone call. They said, it's a, a church in Desert Hot Springs that wants to talk to you, Pastor. So I called them back. I was talking to the elder, the, the, the main elder of the church, and he says, hey, we're in Desert Hot Springs. We have a beautiful property, $2 million property. It's debt-free, and we would love to merge with Destiny. We would like to have a Destiny church in Desert Hot Springs. I said, okay, well, I'd love to go over there and see it. So I drove over there. Facilities were beautiful. Sit down with the elder board. As we're sitting down, they start telling me about the 17 people that are in their church. And so all of a sudden, as I was driving there, I asked the Holy Spirit to come upon me. So I sit there and I ask the question, I said, how many pastors have you guys had? I said, well, we've had a couple. I said, well, you know, over the last five years, how many pastors have you had? They said, oh, we've had five. I said, wait a minute, you guys have had five pastors in five years? What, immoral failures, embezzlement of money, why, why, why are they not there? They go, oh, well, you know, they just weren't fit. All of a sudden, I start discerning what's going on. We started talking more, and the more they began to talk, the more and more I realized, this ain't for us. I said, man, I appreciate it. I'm honored that you would think of us, but this isn't for us. They looked at us and said, are you serious? Yeah. How did I make that decision? The Holy Spirit. Three months later, I'm at Wilma's and Frida's on El Paseo having breakfast with my pastor, his wife. We're just talking about life. And right when we're about to leave, he says, can I tell you guys something? Can I ask you something? I said, yeah. Linda and I, we've been praying about it, talking about it. We would love you guys to be the next pastors of the church. It didn't dawn on me until this week as I was studying how God brought that whole situation back to my remembrance. I felt the Holy Spirit tell me, because I was on you, you could say no to what was good, and you had a yes to something that would be great. You see, can I tell you something? When you're in business, the Holy Spirit knows about your future. Matter of fact, he's omniscient, omni, meaning all, Science, all, omniscient meaning science, which means he is all science, which means, which means he is all knowing. In your language, he knows everything about your everything. And see, listen, when you're living your life, when you're in business, imagine having a business partner called the Holy Spirit. Imagine the Holy Spirit being your teacher, the one who knows everything about your everything. You won't make dumb decisions. You won't make decisions based on impulse. Why? Because you'll have knowledge when you need it. You'll have supernatural wisdom before you ever can have it. Why? Because this is exactly what you need in order to succeed, to have the success that God has for your life. See, friends, listen. We can't afford to live another day living in the spirit of dumb. Come on, we can't live another day taking on the spirit of stupidity. Come on, ignorance is eradicated 
when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. It's when you will start making decisions. And you're sitting there and you'll be surprised and going, why did I even do that? Man, I don't even know where that came from. It came from the Holy Spirit that's living inside of you. See, 1 Corinthians 14 says it like this. Follow the love and eagerly desire the gifts of the Spirit. So you're saying, what are you saying? Let me give you three things really quick of why the Holy Spirit anoints you, why the Holy Spirit touches you. Three things. Number one, the reason why he does is that you can discover the gifts God has given you. So that you can discover the gifts God has given you. What good is it? What good is it to never discover what's inside your life? God wants you to discover the gift that's in your life. The second thing he wants to do, listen, is he wants you in to embrace the gifts God has given you. He wants you to embrace the gifts God has given you. Your life is a gift to be a gift to somebody else. And everything about your gifts are to be for the others that need to receive from what's in your life. And then lastly, as I close, because I'm going to anoint your hands, he'll use the gifts God has given me. You'll use the gifts God has given me. I love what the Bible says in 1 Peter. Look what it says. In 1 Peter it says, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of what? Spiritual gifts. He says, use them well to serve one another. Can I tell you why he gives you gifts? Can I tell you why he wants the Holy Spirit to come on you? It's simple. Here's why. You'll be at work. Someone just got bad news. They need a miracle. You know what you'll be able to say? Can I pray for you right now? And as soon as you begin to pray for that person, the Holy Spirit will give you the gift of miracles because he distributes as he wills. You're going to get a phone call. It's going to be one of your friends. They're going to be confused. They don't, I don't know what to do. I don't know whether I should stay with them or not. The Holy Spirit's going to use you. He's going to give you wisdom and knowledge. You're going to be able to use the gift as a gift to that person's life. You're in business. You have a dream in you. You want to expand and enlarge. But you got several opportunities. And all the doors look great. you want to know what's the right one you know how you're going to know the Holy Spirit who knows everything about your everything who knows about your future and he's the one that leads you to it you want to know why I'm not afraid of the future because if it's already established, then even now I'm being equipped for it. And as I am, every step I take, the right gift will come for the right moment. Next week, I may need a gift of faith to believe beyond what my faith can believe for. Because maybe... What's in front of me is going to require the gift of faith. But what's in me is just mustard seed faith. And the Lord said, no, in order for you to get to your destiny, it can't be the mustard seed faith. It has to be the gift of faith that can get you there. And he'll give it to me at that moment. I'll have a sense of belief like never before that I know that I know that I know 
that God, what he has appointed, he's anointed. And what God has ordained, he has allowed it to come to pass. I know it. I can look at these men. And when I showed you, and you'll see them in a few weeks as they were here in services, but you'll see them on the stage. We're going to be doing a presentation. But you'll see my, my board of advisors, mayors, contractors, lawyers. I'm talking some of the most influential people in this valley that come to this church that are on our board. We were just at Ruth Chris just a few months ago. And our chairman of our board was making a presentation to all the different sites and locations they've been looking at. All these men who are experts at what they do were chiming in. When it was all said and done, they looked at myself. And they said, Pastor, you tell us. We gave you our advice, but you tell us. And you realize at that moment, you're not making a decision that's going to affect you. You're making a decision for you, and we're making decisions for your children. And at that time, I can't lean on what I know. i got to have the Holy Spirit that will show me the knowledge and the wisdom to just say, we're not going to do that. It's not the right time. The time will come. And when it does, Pastor Obed, we found this building. It was right there. There was a building in La Quinta that was right there. It would only seat 600, 200 more than here. I walked in. And then I walked right back out. And they said, what do you think? I said, it's not it. Are you sure? It's not it. How do you know? Because I know. It's not it. A month later, our guy calls me up. He says, you're not going to believe this. I said, what? He says, I just found out that that building had pipes on the bottom that bursted. All on the bottom. Pastor, they would have had to redig the foundations to get the water from the, the pipes from the water well in, and it would have cost us about a half a million dollars. He says, I quite didn't understand when you said no, but now I do. He will show you things to come. Why? Because he'll give you knowledge. He'll give you wisdom. Friends, in this moment, God wants you to lean on him. There's some of you today that are in business. Some of you today that have dreams in your life. God told Moses in the book of Exodus chapters 30 through chapters 36. He says, I want you to gather the skillful people of all trades as they build my temple. And I want you, Moses, to anoint their hands. That word anoint in the Hebrew is the same word to rub. It's the same word that was used when they would anoint the high priest to be consecrated into the priesthood. What are you saying? That God anoints your skills as much as he anoints our lives. That you are just as anointed as a business person, a leader, a nurse, a, whatever you are. You are just as anointed to do it as I'm anointed right now to preach the gospel. Today, God wants to put a super on your natural. And here's what we're going to do as we did every service. Those of you that have a dream in your life. And those of you today that know that God has called you to build something that's beyond yourself, whether that's a career, whether it's a business, whatever it is, you know that it's inside of here. Whatever it is, the Lord has told me to anoint your hands tonight. Just like Moses anointed the hands of the skillful, 
They built something nobody ever saw. Can I tell you that you're going to build something nobody's ever going to see? People will never imagine that it was you that built that. Because no eyes have seen, no ears have heard all that God has in store for your lives today. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do. And if that's you today, it may not be everybody, but that's you today. And you say, Pastor Obed, that's me. I feel the anointing about to descend in this place. If that's you today and you say, Pastor Obed, I want my hands anointed. I want them consecrated for heaven. I want these hands to be used of God. Can I tell you that when God anoints your hands, multiplication takes place in your hands. When Jesus took the two fish and five loaves and he lifted them up and he blessed them. And when he brought it back down, it was still two fish and five loaves. But when he put it into the hands that were anointed of the disciples, the Bible says the multiplication began to take place inside their hands. Can I tell you that in your hands there's increase. In your hands there's abundance. In your hands there is multiplication. It's in your hands right now. There's contracts in your hands that God is going to use your hands to anoint. And when you take that contract and 20 others take the same one, God's going to give you favor. You want to know why? Because your hands have a super on that natural. And what's supernatural goes beyond the natural. They can have a bigger business. They can have more employees. But because you got all of heaven backing you up, God says those hands are anointed. I'm going to use it for my glory. That's what I'm going to use it for. In your hands are promotions, raises. In your hands are healings. In your hands is increase. In your hands are an extension of heaven. Is your, in your hands there is hope. In your hands there is faith. In your hands there is joy. In your hands, there is comfort. I feel it right now. In your hands, there is a, there's a fire that will come out of it because you're an extension of heaven. And when God cannot touch them, he will use you as a conduit to touch their lives. Your hands will be a vessel. No longer, when these hands are anointed, will it be you that will you be allowed to build what you may want to build, your empire. No, God wants a kingdom built, and he's using your hands to do it.